Thank you for joining us today. We'll be starting the broadcast in just about a minute, just about a minute for the Microsoft SharePoint and Telerik Sitefinity webcast. Thank you. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, wherever you happen to be in the world. Welcome to the Microsoft SharePoint and Telerik Sitefinity webcast, the right tool for the right job. My name is Robert Matson. I'm the Director of Product Marketing for the Sitefinity product here at Telerik, and I'm going to be your host today. But what I'm most thrilled about is our guest speaker. We're very fortunate today to have Lino Tadros, the President and CEO of Falafel Software, joining us today. Uh, Lino is a, a bit of a, uh, a special guest speaker for us today because he is very, very well known in our uh, technology space. Uh, Lino has been a featured speaker in 46 different countries over the last 25 years. He's got a long history both leading Falafel Software and also uh, with other organizations that he has been with in the past, uh, including people like Borland, where he's worked on Delphi, C++, and what I think is most special is that Lino, has, for the last 12 years, has been a Microsoft MVP. Now, there's about 4,000 MVPs worldwide, and for someone to hold that honor for 12 consecutive years, that is uh, something that's pretty spectacular. Uh, Lino's got experience in everything from .NET to web services and uh, Windows phone technology, and uh, really, he is uh, one of these people that you want to try to stump if you're a technologist. So, uh, Lino, you on the line with us? Yes, thank you so much for the introduction, Robert. I appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Great. Well, thank you, Lino, and we'll be getting to you in just a second. Before we start, I'd like to do a little bit of housekeeping. If you have questions, uh, you can put them in the question box. We will be addressing those at the end of the presentation. Uh, so please feel free to fill that up, and we'll get to as many as we can by the end of the presentation. Uh, just so a little background on me, uh, I do have a history in the wonderful world of both document and content management. Uh, for any of you who are, uh, remember the Allaire Cold Fusion platform, it's still uh, in use now by Adobe. Uh, I, if you uh, were a user and a developer in that in the 90s, I probably sent you a T-shirt or an email. So uh, I'm very excited to talk about this particular topic today. So what brought all this on was in the December time frame, Microsoft on one of their support, uh, support sites, they put out some information about how the SharePoint online public website feature was going to be no longer supported. Now they didn't do this with a whole lot of fanfare, uh, but a lot of people started noticing and picking it up and you can see that we've got from Redmond Magazine that Microsoft confirmed the public removal from SharePoint and, well, obviously they're not putting people cold turkey and saying you can no longer use this feature for people already using it, but they are discontinuing support. And the interesting thing about this is really about who does it affect and how do people need to start thinking about maybe transitioning from this no longer supported feature set. So, Lino, when we talk about who does this affect, really what are the organizations that should start thinking about this announcement? Uh, mainly the companies that are actually using SharePoint in the wrong way of actually having a public website based on it. And remember also, Robert, that this, for current customers that are using it for public websites, this will not take effect until March 9, 2017. But for people that do not have public websites on SharePoint, as of next week, March 9, 2015, they will no longer be able to do that. But for current customers, they have another two years. 
I've got it. But so it's definitely something that people should start thinking about now. Unfortunately, Microsoft gave them a little bit of a runway, so they can take some time to start looking at some options about when the site actually is no longer going to be available to them. So why don't we just jump in and start talking about kind of the space around this. So as I mentioned before, uh, I've got a bit of a history in document management and content management, so I'm going to take a, a brief look at the two different areas and what they mean historically. So when you think about document management, this is something that really came about electronically, really in the forefront in the 80s and the early 90s, where you saw a lot of different players in this space. Uh, when, I was look, when I was working in this field for a company called NovaSoft or NovaCAD uh, back in the day in the early 90s, there were people like Documentum and Stellant. And really the key to document management in that time, it first started historically around a lot of like the larger CAD files, hence the name NovaCAD. Uh, but it was about having a repository and having something that was searchable. So you can have an online repository of either scanned items or online documents and the ability to run workflows, so to control the access and the editing of these documents. And that was pretty much what it was. There was a lot of internal, um, internal uh, aspects to this technology, and it was used a lot in the old client-server world. But as, as things developed, you started to see the transition from document management systems to content management systems with the advent of public websites. And a lot of that was really the web enabling of a lot of the document management systems early on. And, but then people started saying, well, wait a minute, we've got this great system that we can utilize for document management. What about utilizing it for something that is a little bit more public facing uh, when it comes to web enabling these types of systems? And then it was the transition from document management to content management in the mid-90s. And you saw people like uh, Open Market or Broad Vision or Vignettes or ePrize, Red Dot, names like that that started to take those concepts and translate them into the world of content management where we're, they were managing the editing of web content for public consumption. So that's the way I remember it, Lino. Does that, uh, does that bring up any memories to you? Oh, absolutely. In the mid-90s, all the way to the end of the 90s, uh, our jobs actually we were uh, implementing for the dot-com days, if you remember these lovely days, uh, systems like Epicentering and Plumtree and Vignette. Um, and they used to be incredibly expensive. They used to sell it per CPU on the server, a uh, quarter of a million dollar per CPU. <laughs> so a machine with a quad used to be a million dollars just to implement Hello World before you even do anything in the system. These were the fun days. Yeah, those are the days I recall them very much as a, as a marketer. Those are the days I think of as the big budget days. <laughs> Everyone had a huge budget and were willing to spend it. So it, I remember one of the key things about document management and content management was always integration into the office suite. That was one of the big things that everyone was trying to do, to be you know, as native as they can to the office suite. And I think that's kind of a, a natural transition to when we take a look at the two uh, products that we're talking about today, uh, SharePoint Online and Telerik Site Affinity, uh, where SharePoint lives mostly in that document management space and Site Affinity in the content management space. And Really, SharePoint was kind of the answer, Microsoft's own answer to a lot of these individual um, startup document management vendors saying, wait a minute, we should be having our own product in this space. And they came up with uh, the SharePoint product. And Telerik Sitefinity is, is really one of those second or even third generation content management systems that after a lot of the early, uh, I, I'll be polite and say less than elegant uh, content management systems from early in the day, um, to something that is really a bit more web native and had a lot of the richer feature sets that we see today. So can we talk, I'd like to give people a little bit of background about Falafel and your experience with these type of systems. And I know you've been doing it a long time, so can you give us a little history about how Falafel has really worked with these types of systems historically? Well, we have been in business for about 13 years now, and uh, we have been partners with Telerik for uh, 11 and a half of these 13 years. And with Sitefinity specifically, it's been eight years now that we have been doing a lot of work. 380 different uh, web applications and websites for customers over these eight years. Uh, even with SharePoint, we have done a lot of work with SharePoint as well. Uh, most of it, believe it or not, has to do with Telerik as well. A lot of uh, SharePoint websites have been uh, requiring like the Telerik Red Grid or the charts or Three views. 
very famous in the day. Um, and nowadays things have changed a little bit that they're using in SharePoint some things like Kendo UI and other technologies from Telerik. So actually they go way back for the last 10 years, uh, Telerik and SharePoint have been working together, believe it or not, and a lot of customers wanted to get some of the Telerik technologies embedded inside of the SharePoint. We have done um, consulting on SharePoint, we have done uh, consulting on Sitefinity for a long time. They are both different, in my opinion. One is a very good document management system, and the other is a very good content management system. And I believe they both will, will work very well together into the future, and I'm hoping the rest of our conversation today will give some examples to show people how we were able to accomplish that. Excellent. So why don't we start diving in? I know we've got a lot of uh, a lot of technical people and developers on the line, and um, and so I was talking to Lino before we started that I was going to give everyone an opportunity to try to stump him because if he's a Microsoft MVP, he should be a pretty smart guy. So feel free, don't hold back with your questions, and when we get to the end, we'll try to stump Lino and see if we can uh, get some questions that he maybe uh, can't handle as easily as a lot of the questions that uh, that he's been given before. So why don't we jump into this, Lino? Uh, so we've got SharePoint and Sitefinity, both examples of document management and content management. Let's talk about technically, you know, what they do and why they're different. I, I agree. Actually, it's not definitely an or, it's an and nowadays. So uh, I noticed for the last 10 years, a lot of the different government agencies here in the United States, whether it's federal or state, a lot of medical companies and a lot of oil companies have invested a significant amount of money in SharePoint. Uh, based on having a major document management system. And while they're at it and doing the collaboration between the work groups, which SharePoint was actually invented for, they decided to move it a little bit further and have some of the stuff available for the outside public websites. And this is where actually the system suffers a little bit because it was never designed to do such a thing. Uh, SharePoint has an excellent enterprise search engine. Uh, it is very well known in the industry that they have a very good search engine there. Um, the collaboration on single documents, that is one of the major features in SharePoint that a lot of people like, uh, all the different kind of documents that you can collaborate on. Uh, also the API, through the years SharePoint have changed their API several times until now we are actually sitting on a pretty good API whether it's using REST APIs or using the JavaScript object model. Um, but it's definitely as long as people are comfortable with the fact that it's not, it was not built to begin with to be a public sharing site. For Sitefinity, um, from the old days where Sitefinity, like 3.0 and 3.7, uh, several years ago, uh, was a great system, and now we went from 4 to 5, 6, 7, and almost now we're releasing Sitefinity 8.0. Uh, the product has seen tremendous growth and tremendous um, uh, great, great way of building a website. The reason why Sitefinity is pretty successful is because it brings the entire team in a company uh, to work together. Whether you're in the marketing team or executive team or accounting team or development team, uh, you don't have to have a bottleneck where only a few people can actually make changes to the website. So it cannot be very technical and it has to be easy on the eye and it has to be simple to make changes. And these things are definitely in Sitefinity. That's why a lot of companies have, um, have been going to Sitefinity over the years. Um, the elegant, fast, and productive backend for users is definitely an uh, award-winning system for that. And it also has a very strong API. They have several APIs. One is a native API, one is a fluent API, and they also have a REST API as well. And it is true that Sitefinity works very well with SharePoint as the repository because some companies do not want to abandon all the work that they have done over the years in SharePoint. There is millions of documents and, and millions of, uh, maybe not millions, of hours put into building that SharePoint internal sites uh, and intranets, and they would like to publish some of the stuff to the outside uh, websites. And that, this is where Sitefinity can actually work very well uh, with SharePoint to be the outside facing website for the SharePoint repository. And I think, you know, when I, when I think of the difference between the two, and I think back in the day um, when I was pitching DocMan, it was more the, what's the, the lowest, the atomic level of each system, where the atomic level of the document management system is a document. It's, a, it's you know, a Word document, a CAD file, a, an image, or something like that. So that is kind of the minimum level of control that you have. You can move that around, you can give rights to it, but when you talk about in the content management world, it's all about really much more granular control. I mean, you're building things on the fly, you, you're creating web pages, 
you're you know, doing things in a, in a responsive design, so changing the format of things for mobile. So there's just a lot more control, a lot more granularity in, in the content management world than in the document, manage, uh, document management world. That is co correct. The SharePoint, always the document will be the center of focus. Inside Affinity, there are two pieces that are always the center of focus, a content item and a page item. Content item could be a blog post, an event, a press release, and any of these kind of things. These are the focus of where you're starting from. And the pages are the containers of all these things uh, inside Affinity. So the concept uh, is a little bit different, but it's definitely much easier to, uh, to get for a lot of different people that are not technical. The idea behind having uh, a content management system is that you're allowing your team that are some of them that are not technical to be productive and understand what's going on and make changes automatically to the system. Excellent. So why don't we start jumping into some examples and we're going to take a look at a series of projects uh, that have, uh, that Lino and the Swaffle team have worked on, and one that uh, I brought to the table as a as a Sitefinity example that I thought was a great customer example of someone using both SharePoint and uh, Sitefinity as well. And we're going to dig into the business reasons behind why they chose a particular uh, particular platform, uh, the technical reasons and the technical challenges that had to be overcome, and also you know, take a look a little bit about the results of what they got out of those projects. And what we're hoping to do here is for those people that are that are online is to give you examples of when you take a look at a project, you could start saying this is the flavor technology that's going to be most effective so you don't waste time when you actually start trying to implement a given product or platform. So with that said, so Lino, this is one of yours, uh, and I see a big American flag and a U.S. government <laughs> agent. I, I assume that means you can't tell us which government agency it was. That's the bad part sometimes about these things. When you work with uh, with medical companies or United States government agencies, you can't use the name, but I'm going to leave it to uh, people's imagination <laughs> a little bit. But uh, believe it or not, SharePoint is heavily used, actually, in federal and state here in the United States. And I know it's the same case for a lot of companies, uh, a lot of uh, countries around the world as well. But um, we'll, we'll talk about it as a USA government agency. We'll say that um, elaborate setup and server configuration with load balancing. That is, first of all, what most people that are actually uh, trying to set up SharePoint, and that's a project that came just SharePoint, has nothing to do with Sitefinity whatsoever, um, that wanted to have a load balancing multiple servers, and they wanted to have... And most important for them was establishing a work group collaborative sites. So it is intranets, it's not a public uh, facing site, but it's mainly for establishing the work group collaborative sites for that. And they used a um, significant amount of uh, taxonomy plans for document management, for finding these documents uh, easily. Also, uh, users assessment, how many people are using the system and how it works, um, and being able to works that way. So um, we use an internal collaboration tool for documents and spreadsheets and also they wanted to integrate it with their internal systems and if you're familiar with government agencies they are still working in a terminal DOS box sometimes so it was pretty hard to actually integrate some of their current systems that uh, is probably 10 to 15 years old uh, and make that data available directly um, into uh, SharePoint as well. But uh, the, this currently on it till today. So I have, I have to ask, Lino, so if you had these ancient systems, what what's the lowest level you had to resort to tech, to integrate them? I mean, they you, use, you know, shoving flat files, importing and exporting, doing that type of thing? It was. It was a lot of uh, importing and exporting, and we built an engine for regular expressions so that we can actually look for specific things in the data coming in and being able to, to dump it into different uh, data packets so we can make sense of it. So it was a major job to be able to, uh, to pass all this data through the pipe and find out where it belongs. So uh, it was a, that's the major job, which was the integration with the current system, which is 10, 15 years old, because it didn't have an API or anything like that. So and some of them are still, were still, and, and still till today, running on things like DBase uh, um, and, and stuff like that. It's uh, ancient stuff. Yeah, I'm sure there's an old version of Fox Pro around there somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, Paradox. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, now you're getting back to Borland. That's, that's, yes. uh, that's an old ad. But uh, so when you talked about the you know the elaborate setup and server configuration and load balancing, was that using things that were built into SharePoint, or did you have to use third party? 
Uh, no, actually, it was built in. They had a pretty good um, load balancing system. There are many, many third parties as well that will do this, uh, but the one that we use was built into SharePoint at this time. Okay, so that's kind of your pure Brendan, and I noticed that you mentioned that it was a uh, an internally facing document collaboration. So it's pretty much the ideal target use for SharePoint. That is correct, yes. That is the best okay. way for internet sites and uh, the, the strengths of SharePoint is in work group collaborative sites. That's what it was made for, that's what was architected for, and it works pretty well when you use it that way. Okay, so let's, we're going to bring you out of the government agency space and we're <laughs> going to bring you into a little bit more of our corporate world and this is a uh, Sitefinity example. So why don't you walk us through how, why you use Sitefinity for this particular project and uh, some of the challenges that you faced. Excellent. So True Blue is one of our dear customers. Um, uh, they have so many different websites, uh, actually a couple of dozens, and they wanted a platform so that they don't have to, to build everything from scratch every time. So we have some great architects here at Falafel that have been helping them for the last year and year and a half. Um, system that will allow to use a framework that will be building all their websites based on that. So it has heavily customized Sitefinity dynamic modules. Um, right now, it's 80,000 visits per day, and uh, our architects were able to get the page loads to less than 500 milliseconds for page load speeds, which is uh, pretty good, actually, for the amount of data on these pages. Uh, it has a custom data analytics module for job searches to provide more insight to the True Blue team. Uh, we use heavy MVC on, the, on these sites, so the framework itself was built heavily on MVC. Uh, we have uh, load balanced multi-server configuration, which works very, very well inside Finity. And bootstrap and modern layouts, uh, especially for uh, iPhones and Androids and Windows phones and others, uh, making sure that the website has a unique look if you take a look at it from these phones or these mobile systems. Uh, the system have been um, putting out these sites. The first one took a longer time because it was building the entire framework. But now if you see the, the logos at the bottom there, um, you'll see that a lot of these have actually gone up because um, the framework has been set in place all based on the MVC inside of Sitefinity as well. So uh, were they on separate systems before you started this project? They were actually, yes, they were, they were all over the place. They didn't have just one system. They were trying, each department was doing their own thing, um, but basing, basing the whole thing on one architecture for Sitefinity, that brought the whole company together because they are all over the world and all over the United States, and you can see from the logos there, they are, uh, they are everywhere. And so they have multiple sites, so multiple online entities, had to be supported, driving consistency. Did, did you really, did, were you able to reutilize a lot of your technology? I mean, you said they built a framework. Obviously, their content is very different. Their design would be very different. Yes. But you were able to leverage some commonalities between these sites to make it easier for the uh, True Blue folks to manage it? I have to be honest with you. We have built our own framework on top of Sitefinity over the years. We even give it away for free for all customers. So you can go right now and download it for free. And we give it a funny name. It's called Baba Ganoush. So you think Falafel Software and Baba Ganoush, that hopefully will get a laugh for somebody. But the Baba Ganoush framework is uh, everything we learn about how to make Sitefinity extremely fast um, and extremely easy to develop against have been built into this Baba Ganoush modules. And once you install it into your website, you get all the, the benefits for the Baba Ganoush right away. And we were going to sell that, actually, but in reality, we wanted everybody to, uh, to enjoy. So last year, we ended up putting on our website, and it can be downloaded by anybody in the world. So these projects usually will have that MVC-based system on top of it to make this happen. And yeah, MVC. See, I mean, some people are have not started using MVC yet. Some people are are you know more in, in the cutting and bleeding edges of it. Um, I mean, do you find it's something that is makes life a lot easier, especially in the content management world? It is. It is. We we definitely, in our opinion, we will never go back <laughs> kind of thing. So the difference between the old ASP.NET Web Forms way and the MVC way, I respect both, but based on uh, 
productivity and also uh, performance uh, and scalability, we find MVC to be way, way superior. So there is no um, view state and there is a lot of technical issues we can get into, but MVC will, uh, will definitely allow your site to, to be better organized and actually faster in, uh, in execution as well. Okay, so everyone on that is watching the webcast heard you know, say that there are a lot of technical issues about MVC. That, uh, so if you want to ask a question about that, feel free to uh, put it into your question queue and we'll see if we can get to it later on in the broadcast. And, and by the so, way, Robert, for those of you with Sitefinity, um, the Sitefinity system was built on um, ASP.NET web forms. But the fun thing about it is that they allow you to build MVC right in, and they have some free utilities for, for Visual Studio, like uh, Thunder, and also they have a project called Feather, which allows you to, to build MVC um, paradigms inside Finity extremely easy. Uh, it would do the grunt of the work to create all the, uh, generate all the code, and you just have to focus on the things that you are interested in. Um, so I definitely recommend for you to take a look at that. There are a lot of videos out there and white papers on the Telerik website that explains how to use these systems, um, and is definitely very superior to others in the, in the industry right now. Thanks, Leno. I pr we appreciate the plug. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to lead a break, and I'm going to tell a little story from, uh, from some of our client base. Um, now, the Tata Beverage Group is, has a number of different brands, but the one that uh, people are very familiar with is the Tetley Tea brand, uh, very well known here in the U.S. and also obviously in the U.K. Uh, so when Tata was trying to change over and update a lot of their websites, they, uh, they had a challenge because they kind of started in one direction and then shifted. So they started on a SharePoint direction and shifted, and I'd like you to tell you, I would like to tell you the story about that process they went through to kind of give you the example of uh, picking the right solution for the right project. So when they were taking a look at it, they said, listen, we've got SharePoint technology in-house. It's all here. We've got plenty of people that know how to use it well. We're going to utilize it. And so they went forth in that direction. Now, to give you a little background, uh, they have about 17 different sites in 17 different global regions. And some of these sites are multiple language. Uh, Swiss, uh, the Swiss site is four languages, for instance. And so they had to use some Really, they had some pretty precise needs when it comes to what they had to roll out. But they said, okay, we're going to try to use SharePoint, and they actually rolled out six or seven sites on SharePoint. And they found a couple of things when they tried to do this. One is that SharePoint being more of a document management than a content management system out of the box, that a lot of the content management features that they were looking for had to actually be developed on SharePoint. Now, you can do that just fine, but it takes additional effort, additional labor. So they were building that up. And when they actually rolled out these six or seven sites, they found out that managers in the field were not using them. They were avoiding them because the ease of use wasn't quite there. So that was one of the big challenges that they had. And they actually had to go back and try to make a very tough decision. They'd already invested a lot of time and resources into this SharePoint framework. And they said, OK, we're going to take a look at a lot of options, including SharePoint. They weren't kicking it out. They are just saying, we're going to take a look at all the different options to see what they are. And they decided to go with Sitefinity. They could have gone with another platform or another product, but they chose Sitefinity. Um, and this is more about the advantages of content management than Sitefinity itself, but obviously we're pretty proud that they went with us. So they took a look at it, and they, and they started re-implementing and going back and rebuilding these 17 different sites. So the good thing about it is that they found that it was actually really easy to use for multilingual and ease of use for the managers. So managers were much happier. And they could also deploy multilingual sites a lot easier because those are built-in features in the Sitefinity platform. And when it came down to it, they said, you know, what we could do is we could actually reduce our training costs and we can actually do better SEO. And they were getting better SEO results almost instantly because that's also built into a content management framework because it's used for external versus a document management tend to be used for internal SEO, not a big issue there. So they actually redid that, and they even be able to roll out a complete site within a month's time. So the speed of implementation was improved. And they said that they actually saved about 250,000 pounds over the course of five years of use. That was their projection because things were going to be quicker and easier to use. In fact, because they saved so much time, they were able to roll out things like e-commerce in their UK site that was built into the content management of Sitefinity platform, obviously something that's not native to something like SharePoint. So it just shows that, that, old, uh, that old thought and the old saying that, you know, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. 
they tried to do that because they had the expertise in-house, they had the platform in-house, but it turned out not to be the right solution for their particular need. So I think this is a great example of, you know, making sure that you can use the right tool for the right job. And the interesting thing is that the reverse is true. If you were going to build a document management platform on Sitefinity, it could do it, and you could build it out. But there are a lot of things that are already built out in SharePoint that are more appropriate for it. So uh, just pick the right one, and you'll be in much better shape. So, Lena, were you able to get a quick drink? Absolutely. Okay, so why don't we transition back to you. I think this is one of, one of the more interesting examples because it is an example of not replacing SharePoint with Siphony, but actually using them together. Yeah, this was a fun project, actually. Uh, it starts by uh, last year, we had a booth. Uh, we were a sponsor of a conference, actually, uh, in the Middle East. And we had a monitor and a computer, and we were sitting down and showing Sitefinity. And uh, uh, people from the Qatar um, embassies stopped by and took for the first time a look at Sitefinity. And they are heavy, uh, heavy use of SharePoint um, in, in Qatar as far as the government. So when they saw that, they really uh, were shocked. They didn't even know it existed at the time. And, uh, and they brought us in to meet the team. And they wanted to actually, which is really significant. But they wanted all the other embassies all over the world for Qatar to be able to build their own website, uh, make it whatever they want, but still get the data directly from SharePoint. So that's an example of showing how the two can work very well together. SharePoint with the REST APIs and JSON uh, can definitely uh, allow you to get the data. With Sitefinity, there is a lot of uh, wonderful features like the piping. There's interfaces in Sitefinity that will allow you to do piping to get the data in and out from, uh, from places. Uh, with SharePoint, you can do that as well. So we have actually helped them build these, um, the framework and uh, the first few sites for these embassies. Um, the, the project is still continuing to go. Um, and it allowed a major investment of a SharePoint to be in Qatar, and all the embassies all around the world are using Sitefinity for the public-facing sites. It has been a tremendous success so far. Excellent. And so the interesting thing about that is, of course, when you take a look at the ability to serve up content worldwide, sometimes uh, when you see organizations that are, or organizations, countries in this case, that are outside, they like having options when it comes to having things uh, stored in certain areas. And the nice thing I think about, um, maybe not this example, but the ability to utilize things like the Azure, uh, the, you know, the Azure platform on top of Microsoft for the different platforms is something that can be handy for these uh, international clients. Yes, I totally agree, and I'm very happy. As of right now, we are in pretty good shape with Sitefinity as well for Azure. Uh, there was some glitches in the past based on the search engines not being able to, to work with Azure, but all that stuff has been fixed lately in the last couple of releases, and the system is ready to go um, on the Azure system as well. So this is definitely great news for people that do not want to have the infrastructure and they just want to go ahead and pass everything to uh, Microsoft Azure to do that. Great. So with that said, those are some examples, I think, of, of good projects that fit for particular reasons uh, and good stories. Now, I know we have a bunch of developers on, on, the, uh, on the broadcast, so I'd like to start talking about, you know, if I'm a developer, and you know, you're, you're a developer of many, many years, um, what do you need to know to use one or both of these types of solutions? Um, and to start with, you know, what kind of tools would a developer use and maybe they're using both. Is there tools that are really great for both platforms? Well, that's an easy question. It's uh, for both of them. Of course, it's going to be Visual Studio. So Visual Studio is, uh, is in my opinion, is the best IDE available in the industry today. I know a lot of people will, uh, coming from the Java world or other, will disagree. But for those of you that have been doing work with the Microsoft technologies, Visual Studio is ahead of its, uh, of any other competitors. Um, so Visual Studio is the way to go, definitely, to, to do this kind of thing. So uh, that's part of the tools, all righty? But as far as what you have either one, whether it's SharePoint or with um, 
Sitefinity, I would have to say that there is so many technologies that come up every day. I mean, by the time we go to sleep tonight, wake up tomorrow, there will probably be a brand new JavaScript library somewhere. So uh, it's so difficult to keep up with all the stuff that's coming up. But having a very good understanding of ASP.NET, having nowadays a good understanding of JavaScript libraries like the Kendo UI, which is heavily even used in SharePoint itself, even though it's a product from Telerik, a lot of people like to use Kendo UI in SharePoint as well. Of course, Kendo UI is built into Sitefinity, and people can build whatever they want with that in Sitefinity as well. Plus, uh, there's a lot of mobile technologies like Ionic and other. Um, there is a, a lot of different things that you can use. Uh, none of these technologies will keep you from using other technologies for the web inside of their infrastructure. But I would say my recommendation is that whether you're using SharePoint or Sitefinity, you really need to focus on learning MVC so you can actually have a better performance and scalability for your site going into the future. And both of them will embrace uh, that technology going into the future as well. Okay, excellent. So what about things like speed of development? I mean, is if you're developing a project, I mean, I know there'd probably be different projects as we just illustrated. But you know, is there one that is there one? Thing, how do you maximize your speed of development? Might be a better a better question. I'm going to sound a little bit of a marketing guy now. <laughs> I actually like the way Sifinity does it better because of the enormous effort being put in the documentation of the product, which is superior to any other, in my opinion. So if you want to find out how to do something, the fact that you can go search on it in the documentation and find full examples of how to do something has been tremendous help to all our team here at, at Falafel Software. So I definitely think that the, uh, the quality of the documentation, the quality of the examples available for the system. Also, they have vibrant uh, communities on Google+. Plus. They have groups. They have all over the place where people can ask questions and people answer them. Uh, and they have very healthy discussions about the product as well. So uh, I'm not saying that SharePoint doesn't have that. SharePoint has huge communities all over the world and forums, and Microsoft supports it 100%. But I think the quality of examples and the quality of code available out there for Sifinity is pretty superior. Yeah, we appreciate that. Um, so, okay, once you get the, uh, the site up and running, what about, you know, QA? Are there different QA techniques? Uh, I, uh, I actually was a QA manager for a while, and I, I realized how tough it is to test code properly. Uh, but are there any, you know, recommendations or techniques that you found to be effective in either the SharePoint world or the Sitefinity world? We personally don't believe in testing because our code is perfect. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yes, uh, there is two different kind of testing. Um, there is the unit testing, which a developer has to do, and there is the functional testing, which hopefully a QA engineer or a tester will have to do. If you're using MVC code, it's much easier to do unit testing. Like any other MVC um, uh, unit test that you do in Visual Studio, you can continue doing the same thing inside Finity as well. And for functional testing, you can use a good product out there. I know Telerik has one like Test Studio, uh, other tools as well. As long as you have a pretty good system that uh, can read um, the HTML and JavaScript and the CSS and being able to automate the system for you, um, I think it's a must. I mean, most of our projects will will, of course, people are paying you to make sure that you're not giving him something and go into production with bugs in it. Uh, even though in our industry, bugs are part of the uh, of the business, but in reality, it should, the customer should not be the first uh, person to find these things. So uh, I would recommend definitely uh, doing the unit testing on the developer side and the functional testing um, on the main side using the QA engineers. Okay. So you mentioned in a couple of the examples about performance, load balancing, things of that nature. You know, what about performance tuning? Is there, are there any tips and tricks or, or there's a major difference between uh, utilizing something like SharePoint and something like Sitefinity? To, to be honest with you, that's really our bread and butter here at Falafel Software. There are a lot of great developers working on Sitefinity, and customers are using it worldwide. Most of the time when we get a customer, they already have a website developed by themselves or by a different partner or whatever. When they come to us and say, our website is complete, but these two or three pages are taking between seven to eight seconds to come up, and that's unacceptable to our management team. Is there anything we can do? So we actually jump in. Sometimes it takes a couple of hours. Sometimes it takes a whole day to figure out exactly why are these pages taking seven to eight seconds to come up. And we have a very good team here at Falafel I'm, I'm very proud of that know the internals of not just Sitefinity but 
technologies with JavaScript very, very heavily. So we can actually debug this using the latest technologies available to be able to see the performance monitoring on the pages and on the system in general, whether it's the database or the middle tier or the front end if it's JavaScript, to be able to pinpoint what needs to be done. So finding the problem is one thing, and also suggesting um, a solution to fix the problem and most of the time we can bring this down to maybe a quarter to a third of a second and the customer is very happy to do that but yes out of the box you cannot possibly expect the product to do everything 100 percent for performance there is always going to be tweaking and there will always be tips and tricks here and there um, that you would have to do to make sure that you can get the system to scream as far as speed so in the other side of the performance is the scalability aspect of it and you mentioned that I mean, is it as simple as you know, adding more servers or load balancing, or you know, how do you scale properly, especially if you're dealing with a site that is global? This is something we learned, to be honest with you, Robert, when we were 15 to 20 years ago. We always were taught is that for scalability, if today you have a thousand customers and tomorrow you have a hundred thousand customers, if you have to touch your software, you've done something wrong. It has to be handled with hardware. So throw more machines at it. If you end up every time you go from a few thousands to a few hundred thousands, you always have to go re-architect your system. That means you have done something wrong to begin with. So we are a big believer is that if you've done your job right, whether it's for one person or a million people, hopefully you will deal with that using load balancing and multiple farm servers all over the place. But um, And if you remember the days during the dot-com days, like when eBay first came out, eBay did not think that they're going to have all these people actually doing auctions on their website. So after the, the, uh, they brought the whole system down several times, they had to shut down the website and re-architect the whole thing from the beginning because they were expecting maybe 1,000 to 2,000 people, but they never expected they're going to get a quarter of a million to 400,000 people on the first months. So the whole thing came crashing down. So when you write code, write it from the beginning with the idea that this is going to be scalable. Don't write code just to get it to work and then worry about it later. That's a waste of time and resources for your company. Got it. So those are some, and I know we've got some questions that are probably circle around this as well. So I'm, I want to make sure we have plenty of time for that. So I'm just going to uh, make sure that we can sum up a little bit. And I think when we see what we talked about today, I think just understanding what the products are, understanding what they're what they're really meant for, what they were designed for. I mean, you know, just to that point you just made, they were designed for a particular purpose. You know, if eBay in the early day was not designed to be a scalable solution, well, that was one thing. SharePoint was designed to be a great document management system. They've got great APIs, so if you're trying, if you're going to use them as a document repository for an external site, they can work as that. If you're using them as an internal collaboration site, they're great at that. So make sure that you're using the right tool for that. And something like Sitefinity or maybe another CMS out there, but Sitefinity is really good when it comes to external building, you know, make, being a front end and really a system of engagement for people and users to come to the site and interact with it and to allow non-technical people on the back end to do things that usually we had to rely for technical people on. Technical people should be doing things that are exciting and innovative. They should not be doing as much maintenance as they are in a lot of different websites out there. So we'd rather let the technical people do things that are more fun and more interesting, exciting, and innovative, and let the marketing people do the, you know, the more banal stuff that they have to do in their day-to-day -day. because they're really good at messaging and they're really good at writing, writing content, but we shouldn't have to have them do more technical things. So I think just making sure that you know which particular platform is appropriate for your need is you're going to be far better off. So with that said, We'd like to uh, go to some of the questions that we've been getting. And also, I'd like to point out that there are other resources out there. So uh, from the uh, Telerik point of view, uh, just you can send us, if you have a question, feel free to send an info at sitefinity.com. We'll get that. We'll be more than happy to address those questions. Uh, uh, we've got some great blog content. This is uh, Our blogs tend to be on the developer and the technical side. So for you developers and technical folks, if you've not accessed those blogs, a lot of great resources there. And we also have our whole developer network. So you can access that and take a look at a lot of the resources that Lena was talking about. And on the Falafel side, obviously, feel free to send them uh, information, uh, pardon me, questions for further information about what they do. They do some phenomenal work. Uh, they also have some blogs that are very, very interesting. Uh, and also, if you're looking for extra training, they've got, they've got some really great resources there as well. Um, 
So, Leo, I'd like to probably jump in and ask a few more questions, if that's okay with you. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so, here I have one here that was sent in. Um, are there any issues with integrating the CMS and SharePoint if one is in the cloud and the other is installed behind a firewall? That's a good question. Um, good question, absolutely. No, actually, whether it's in Azure or not, you'll have to have the permissions. Both of them have multiple kind of providers for authentication. Uh, but uh, the idea being behind a firewall, um, you'll have to know the ports that you're going through, of course, and the IT will have to enable that. Otherwise, both sites will have to be on the inside. But no, I, I actually don't see any problem, even if there is a firewall or something like that. Um, if there is a need to share the data, there has to be a, a hole, uh, really, between the two. So that's something IT has to be comfortable with during the, the transfer between the two different websites. Okay. Uh, next one is, is uh, this is a pretty good high-level description of things. Thank you for that left-handed compliment. Uh, but where can I get more technical information? All right, so I already gave you a few uh, resources there. But, uh, Lino, I mean, you guys do a lot of things in training, and you know about a lot of resources that, that probably even I don't know. So where, if someone's looking for more technical information, where can they get it? What's a good resource? Absolutely. Um, there are tons of information on the web, whether it's for SharePoint or for Sitefinity. Like I said, the documentation for Sitefinity is excellent. Also, the forums for SharePoint, there is heavy, heavy traffic there as well. Uh, if you go to um, blog.falafel.com, you can search for the word Sitefinity or SharePoint. Uh, we have tons of um, architects here that are writing blogs constantly regarding how to do piping, for instance, for data. So you can look for these things. Um, be honest with you, just Googling um, any information about Sitefinity or piping or SharePoint, you will get a lot of different hits um, right away. Okay. Uh, great. So it's, here's a question that, um, is there functionality that I won't get using something like Sitefinity that I would get with SharePoint? And I think I touched on this. This is an earlier question, but you know, I'll give you a shot at that question just to add a little more color to it. I'll have to say the document management system, the, the purpose SharePoint was built for is very elaborate. I don't think Sitefinity wants to get to the point where they are also a document management system because it's already been done and done well. They want to concentrate on the content management system. So that is the main difference between the two. Uh, in all the times for the last uh, eight or nine years that I've been demoing Sitefinity to customers all around the world, I'll say as soon as they see me doing dragging and dropping, um, from the right side of Sitefinity into the content placeholders, they are sold right away because there, are, there is no other system in the world that will make it that easy to drag and drop content into the system. Usually um, there are some great content management systems out there, but they don't have the drag and drop capability that Sitefinity has. It makes it much easier for all the people in marketing and in accounting and so on and so forth to be able to play in the game right away and be productive and successful. Great point. Uh, so here's another one. Is there a difference in how security works between the two systems? Um, not necessarily. Both of them have um, their internal providers and also third-party providers. Uh, I would say for instance, SharePoint, I'll give them this point, they have an enormous amount of investment happening in federated directories, for instance. Um, you can do it also with Sitefinity. We have customers that requested that we do the federated directories for Sitefinity. You can do it. Uh, but with, with SharePoint, because of the amount of government agencies and medical companies that use it, they ended up having that built in in the latest uh, releases. So um, that is the only difference probably. But other than that, whether you're using uh, authentication levels uh, based on the providers, they both have the same kind of providers. Yeah, it. Well, I think uh, there are a few other questions, but I think we actually answered most of them during uh, during the about the developer section. Um, so, with that said, I'd like to just make one more comment and a little bit of a plug uh, for all the technical folks out there. There is a uh, there's Telerik Next, which is going to be a, a group of hundreds of Telerik developers and also Sifinity developers that are going to be coming together for workshops and networking. Uh, in Boston, you can see it's uh, in the May 3rd through 5th time frame. Uh, if you've not been to Telerik Next, it's, uh, I think it's going to be a fabulous opportunity for you to, to really learn what's happening at Telerik and also learn about uh, new things from your peers in the development space. Uh, and also, as an added bonus, Lino will be speaking at Telerik Next. So if you'd like to come and, uh, and meet the gentleman and ask some of the questions maybe that you uh, thought of after we were done here, uh, that's going to be your opportunity to do that. And you can just go to www.telernext.com.
So with that said, I think we can give you a little bit of time back in your day. Uh, this has been a, really a great opportunity for me and Lino. I've, uh, we haven't had that much of a chance to chat before, so it was a great opportunity for us to get together and to, for me to hear the things that Falafel is doing. And uh, to thank you very much for offering uh, your, uh, your wisdom in this case. Thank you so much for having me, Robert. It was a pleasure and an honor. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you very much, folks, and look forward to uh, the next webcast. We'll be doing more in the future and more exciting things happening here in the world of Sitefinity. Have yourself a fantastic day.